game against complexity the complexity debut Radiant game uh, earlier on last week actually i had to end up casting that series and i believe played a fantastic and <laughs> Oh my god, he actually gets away. No, he doesn't. Never mind. Yeah, the Shadow Word was still on him. I heard it going off, and yeah, so the is just gonna miss, though. Or seven's fine. Yeah, catch though. He needs at least a couple more auto attacks. Bash just hit a course, and I don't think he's getting this kill. Oh, he tried to stay close enough for the crush, and he ends up missing it. Now he's in trouble. The Sun Strike connects, and that will secure the kill. Beautiful turn for Onyx. Four coming out. And then still they'll walk back, and they'll go towards the middle lane, maybe try to play on the Warlock. That could have been the better decision from the beginning, frankly. They still might get it in the end. Sun Strike is going to hit, and it looks like... I don't know if that hit, actually. Yeah, well, the Colding play secures it anyways. Open wounds, meanwhile, on to flee the chase from Yara here. As he's gonna take a silence, though, in the flank, though, flame break and a push it back. And Life Stealer, he's still moving forward. He's still not afraid. He has to rage up. Gonna wear off right there. Flee, though, needs to keep his distance now. The meteor ready to go. Boulder Smash connect. There's that meteor when he jumps inside the creep. Meanwhile, Lasso catches an axe, comes out of the creep doing that damage of Bulba, though. He's keeping his distance, and he will actually survive. Another open wound's not ready. Not enough mana. They do lose Batrider as Mason comes. The last of the old guard. Bit of trouble. Finds Warlock with Battle Hunger up, and he'll just walk it off. Keeping his distance. Bottom lane, they're gonna be diving meanwhile. Life Stealer, one more auto attack. And they secure the remnant comes out and silence through. So if you're by the lasso's ready. Who's the target? Maybe the Earth Spirit? No, he's not gonna use anyone just yet. Just gonna put the fire down with the fire flight in the back of the kitchen bunker as well. The slaughter and warlock. Please just go for the TP though. No bash. And now he will knock it out, actually. The damage is a little bit too much to handle. That must have been so close. Meanwhile, Dubu on the run. Corrosive Haze is up, though. He misses the uphill attack, but that actually lets Slaughter get it arguably better. As that means the Blink Dagger that much closer now. I'll say that. I'll say he lived for me. Bulba, though, on the axe. Now, there's a lot of team support nearby, so this could get interesting if they do go in. They're definitely going in. Axe going to be the target. They catch him off guard immediately, and the Warlock Golem even used. I don't know if that was necessary. More of like a precaution, if anything. And against the axe, go in the background. No, Earth Spirit, he's flying in. Life Shield is kind of left by himself over here. The team from someone retreats, and he goes down. That was a full retreat from Duo. I'm a little curious about that decision. What's over here? Coddle's a little deep. Flesh, uh, or open wounds, excuse me, because he's right there and keeping him slowed and actually securing the kill on a ham. So, that positioning for Demon, maybe a little too aggressive. Flea got the ghost walk off. He'll survive. Sages, which I assume they're going to be able to accomplish. Who do you give it to? Alchemist or Lifestealer? Dyer's middle is under attack. Oh, Lasso attempt in the background right there, but he got Blinded Light pushed back, actually. Gonna be canceled, now he's left by himself. Meanwhile, Life Stealer pops out, Dubu is gonna fall. On the Earth Spear, 747, Chemical Rage activated. He does have the Aegis as mentioned, and puts another Acid Spray down on top of them. But the Coddle, with the Illuminate going through, keeping them off, possibly. They're running on the uphill of the Radiant Ancients. They do push Middle Tower on Bunker. That's the better target. Do they have enough first damage up front? Yes, they do. They lock him down with the lasso. And the team support not there in time. So that they, they couldn't catch the Coddle initially. Better target. Wow. You'll be right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
that was a misplay for sure. Now he doesn't have his mecha. There's a holding blade, so in comes the slider with the three-man stun, but it's not gonna matter now. Magnetize comes out of the background, and this is a retreat mode now. 4-2 up with the Warlock Golem, and the Warlock Golem's coming. There we go, it catches a couple in the background. Axe with the Berserker's call, the Calling Blade goes through. He gets another slam dunk. He has another one ready, but nobody low enough. However, Warlock going to be picked up by Mason back there. Bobo, though, simply trying to lift Blade Break push, though. And Lifestealer able to chase him down. He's seen the front lines, though, Dubu. Now Mason going further. Flea is back, and he's pissed off. He wants some kills. A three for one so far. The Sun Strike, it does connect. And Snake King will fall the double kill for Mason. Drawing it with that Desolator. Oh, the misplay somewhat from Duo off the decision making. They kind of spread there. And look at this, actually. Lifestealer calling back in. Is this even a good move? He may. He's not even going to get the kill, actually. He gets away. He takes up the grape, but it's killed immediately. And out come the cold snaps. And now you are here on Lifestealer. That completes the cleanup. It was one just decision after the. He gets away. Oh my god, that damage. The meatball on top of the sun strike. And Sauter went from full to nothing. They also get snaking up there, and the chase is on Warlock. As he's just simply run, run, run. But I don't know if that's going to work. And actually, yeah, they do catch him. So a three for nothing. Another double kill from. We're gonna fight it and they catch Earth Spirit right here, so that'll be a quick kill. There's that bomb coming out with the life stealer and the bat right there, so find somebody by Dyer's top tower is under attack. I uh, Slaughter, he thought he could TP, he saw Mason open on him. He's like, alright, I'll just gonna get that secondary tower, but Onyx, they're doing the push themselves in the middle lane, and they also will get a secondary tower. That's another 2,700 gold just about. Oh yeah, setting him up here, yep, there we go. And then Flea looking to make a play now, he jumps in, the Meteor comes down. Dale Concoction going off though, will stun Invoker, but... Kind of delaying it feels like right now, the inevitable almost. Alchemist continuing to run, he does have support coming in. Can they get here in time? Bonus match in the background. The lasso does catch play. Out comes the Warlock Column, and they're going for the turn. Burn, baby, burn. There's that combo that you're talking about. And the two fall on the side of Vonix, but Mason will be able to snipe out the Alchemist right there. He uses time lapse, gets back to a good amount of life. About half life right now, Warlock. And he actually escaped barely into life to magnetize himself, though. He is going to go down, but they do get another turn kill on Akata, it looks like. And Adubu on the run on that Earth Spirit. The crush comes out, the Corrosive phases up, and that will be a dead Earth Spirit as well. So now it's Onyx's turn to overcommit a little bit, as they did right there. Good response. Try to catch him. There they go. The Berserker's call. The Sun Strike. Everything being used. Get him to half life, but not enough just yet. In the background, Axe actually got lasted away, and now we'll get a kill on him. It's three man stun in the background as well. In favor of Duop. Look like coming out from the slaughter and Coddle. Gonna be chased down by that Alchemist. The Burn Baby Burn being used. And Fest from Life Stealer. Doing the burst coming out on a Dubu right here, and he will also burn down to the ground. So now Invoker is all run mode for Flea right here. Throws out the tornado. And he will manage to survive. Had a ghost walk just in case. Actually, and this means they're gonna get another Aegis if they give it to Alchemist again, or perhaps Lifestealer this time. Work for both of us? Yeah, better. Is under attack. Oh no. Yeah, he got trapped on the ledge right there. In fact, Duba's gonna lift his magnetize up. Out comes the Warlock Golem now, and he barrel rolls up. Duba's still alive throughout all of this, and they lose Life Stealer in the midst of the, all the chaos going on. Earth right, Spirit finally will fall, but now you see the Radiant side just simply trying to run. Mason, though, sitting from a bar, landing in the auto attack. Does think it's on the last second, but he's going back in with that Shikuchi, illuminate from behind, and Bat Rider is picked up. Alchemist Chemical Rage, he's just on the run. Sun Strike looked like a tempt. Actually, he did hit Warlock right there, maybe trying to TP out. And he goes down, so so far it's a 3 for 1, possibly a 4 for 1 as Alchemist does officially get caught. He's dead, a 4 for 1 is completed. Slaughter the soul. Uh, that's, uh, the movement is pretty insane. And again, with the cooldown only being 6 seconds, using this oh so frequently, he just really slipped free. And they're gonna use it right here to go on a Warlock. No Golem, but they'll just easily take the kill. Life Stealer, meanwhile, just trying to run. Look at the auto attack from Mason, how much damage they do. He jumps inside Alchemist just simply to live. 
But when you're doing that, you know you're in a pretty dire spot. As, uh, well, the Radiant happens to be in this case. So, top lane, Batrider, he's gonna cut into Creep Wave here. The Firefly at least, and trying to delay. Oh, but the Tornado hits, the MP comes out, and Batrider now. Maybe somewhat regretting this decision. Can he actually escape? He's trying to fly away. Deafening Blast connects. The Meatball comes out. And that's a dead Bat Rider. Yep. That's uh, that's him dead. I mean, he does have a... Yeah, that's, that's a good kill. I mean, it's a start for sure. That's, as you mentioned, he had the gem and flip push even a, he went the minus 15 second tornado cooldown ability. Um, did you see that here or is the AOE deafening blast just too good? Aggressive, so it makes sense there, Mason. Here we go. Gonna be in the front lines again, has that Aegis, so he's not really too worried at all as well. It's just frankly being pretty hard to kill in general. 2,500 life, you got the evasion hitter friendly necessarily, but what Onyx needs to and should be doing here. Victory, now the lasso, that's a double. Four staff away, but look at the, can't even kill him. Weaver's gonna time lapse. All the evasions coming down. He time lapsed back to full. They're gonna set him in the back row of Alchemist Will. Trying to get the damage out, but again, it's still not enough. He's just too damn tanky, the evasions are real. And still nobody dying in the background. You had Invoker jumping in, but. It's a falling back, but yeah, this this bug man, he just cannot squat squash this bug here. Yeah, the evasions. Okay, so maybe a little bit of luck to you with the butterfly. It's, uh, it's how difficult it is. Again, even if they manage to kill him, he has the ages. So worst case, time lapse back up in five seconds. Again, play in the background. Catches Warlock, he's burned, he does have his Warlock going, getting enough of time, he's being locked down, there's the one Colding Planet Alchemist by the way, he does not have a flyback in that can all but do it, out come the double Warlock Golems at least, trying to make a presence thought in this fight, but Warlock does fall, and there go the Golems, they just melt away, Batrider simply trying to delay the inevitable, GG well played, it is official, I mean it was just a matter of time really, but Onyx does actually break through and take game one here. Radiant team pick. Storm spirit. Gonna be able to do anything with that. Terrorblade does have that reward again on him, and obviously doesn't want to just give up this bounty rune freely, but probably has to. His bottom lane, okay. They are trying to contest for the bounty rune, and silencer almost gets caught. He actually does get caught with the arrow. Oh, a full arrow, and actually the illuminates nukes right through him. So first blood in favor of Onyx. If he lies there, just has to walk it off, and it ends up being a 2 2 split with the bounty runes. But there you go. But I believe Axe had picked that up prior to him getting over there. So good job by Bulba. Gonna take advantage of stealing it right there. Demon back to the bottom lane as Axe actually ports into the shrine area and comes back middle lane. 747 will fall though. As they do come close enough for a Berserker's Call, though the arrow not gonna hit. He takes the haste that happened to be there. And he'll run away with it. In fact, go for the turn call to Dubu. Dubu over 70 against boundaries. Does have a boulder smash. Excuse me, a barrel roll even, but not gonna be able to get it off. And yeah, Silencer overstepped his boundaries. Getting Tana right there and falling as a result. So, it from Murata just in case as well. I don't know if that was okay. They're actually going for the kill the top lane. That's why. Barrel roll will not connect, but puts him in a decent spot. He actually boulder smashes snaking forward. And they do set up the kill. Flea secures it with the Star Storm. <laughs> Bottom lane. Oh, well played right there. Yeah, using the infest. I mean, that's 100 second cooldown there, but. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, 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 Berserkers call them both. The calling play. There we go. There's the one slam dunking. 
you kind of expect silencers next in line. He's gonna go for the TP. Let him slam dunk, let him slam dunk. Oh, he couldn't get enough life off her. Man, that was... Light me, and pop the global silence, and it prevents all the other counter or the follow-up initiation from happening. So, it's a tool to have. Bottom lane, silencer. As I'm talking about him, Zero Spirit trying to go for the solo kill, although Axe is running in, and that will secure it. As yeah, he gets a spin off actually. <laughs> That's the job. So, silencer just simply trying to soak. up Radiance bottom tower. Huh? You lack discipline now. Life. Yeah, they're gonna go for more. Might as well at this point. Grossa fades. Does have a leap coming up in one second. Gonna use it at the last second right there. The open window, keeping him somewhat nearby. But Fleazy just fast enough. Surge pops onto the slaughter. He does not have enough mana for crush though. In comes the Berserker's cover. Stretch into the back up. Finally showing up. And Verona's picked <laughs> off the Iron Shell, taking down Axe a little bit. Not going to be enough damage though, at least just yet. Although maybe it will be. Yeah, Life Stealer does catch up to him, and eventually picks him off as he attempts to TP away. Ooh, they're going to go for a jump. Have an arrow ready. Axe, he's charging in. There's a recoil. Her spirit. There's the jump. And yeah, they are going to catch him. Global Sun's coming out. Will it be enough to save? No, the arrow attacks too much. The kill right there. Yeah, let's get you out with the blinding line, of course, to push him away and be more effective. Meanwhile, the global silence to use slaughter, though. He gets countered on, and he's going to be taking out Life Stealer. Pops on out, he's going to TP out with the rage immediately. Can his teammates escape, though? That surge, no man on Dark though, as mentioned. He does have the 17 wand charges, but even if he uses it there, he more than likely is in the tower here instead. Radiant structures are falling. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Cross the map very effectively. Slaughter. Flash to the jump inside. They're going right for the bottom lane. And Coddle's going to be their target. Orchid comes out. That's an easy kill. So. But yeah, I mean, that, that's the potential right here. Oh, Terrible was here, so what am I saying? They actually recalled him right here at the last second. TP's coming in, but there's the vacuum wall combination. Major is simply trying to run this whole time. His Sunder is on cooldown currently. Looks like he did use that right there. Dark Seer, meanwhile, gets caught with a magnetized out. The science from Silencer going to be used as now the open wounds activated on a Dubu and actually are here, Life Stealer. Not only helping him to survive, but gets the kill in the end. Dubu, however, ends up with a double kill. As actually Slaughter did fall. Radiance top tower. Turn up there. The Eye of Scotty is just about finished on Terrorblade. Meanwhile, he gets jumped on the wall. Combo comes out and down goes Terrorblade. He had a Sunder, couldn't get off in time. And the global silence, that's what I'm talking about. They, they try to kind of follow up somewhat. I mean, he's going to harass them a little bit, make them take a little bit longer with the blinding light. As long as he doesn't die, this is okay, but... Oh, he's gonna be found now, so he applies the mana leak. And he's gonna go for the TP right here. Oh, boy, well, he finds the opening, catches Silencer. Maybe not the prime target without the Global Science, but it's good nonetheless. Earth Spin in the background gets counted on by Life Stealer and Storm Spread. He drops immediately, so one for one exchange, an eye for an eye, but make it two eyes going down for Onyx right there. As Kata will be picked up with the vacuum pull back in, so it's been right now for Doo Wop, and they want more, they're gonna get more. Axe gets pulled on in by Storm, Storm Spirit, still zip zapping around, and that's more charges for that Bloodstone as Life Stealer. We'll tear right through him as well. So double kill for the life stealer, but no. So they find a jump initially. A big three-man crush coming out from Beerman right there. The club will tell us to follow. They got the one kill on a cuddle right off the bat. The metamorphosis though from Terrorblade in the background. He's putting in some good auto attacks. And Slaughter is getting low, snaking also low himself. And actually will fall on the Dark Seer. So Onyx. 
They are responding pretty well. Their cores are still up, and they want to chase this. Now, 7 core 7 he's got a regen. He has Orchid still. He's still feeling good. Life Stealer, he's going to be called back in. But there we go. A Star Spirit fighting in the background. BKB pop by Mason, though. And all of a sudden, a Star Spirit not as useful. And they pop the Shrine, though. Can Silencer get over here? No, he cannot. And they're going to try to fight around it. It is going to wear off, though. It's just being created by Terrible. They're going back in. Terrible has a Thunder. Can he get it off in time? He pops the Mansell. He will use a Thunder right there. And down it goes. It looks like uh, Sunset of that from before. Star Spirit is picked off. And Yara here, a life stealer. He is going to fall in the end. They're going to transition to a shrine kill. And often, Arrowblade is going to keep sending the illusions out for scouting, if anything. But also, it does have a hurricane pike now, by the way. Axe jumps in, catches Dark here. Will they kill him again before he does anything in the background? Star Spirit flies in, catches his brethren in Earth Spirit. The global science is Dark Spirit goes down. He buys back immediately. Earth Spirit is still alive. And look at the metamorphosis. Mason, he does have the Sunder still. As well, he picks off Life Stealer and Thought Arcade. There's the vacuum wall combo. But it's just too damn late. A triple kill for Mason. And 747 flying away in the back. And he's going to be perched by the creep. Oh, no. He ends up denying himself, actually, with the Bloodstone. But not a good fight once again for a duop. The great jump from Bulba. They picked off Darkseer. And, you know, you got to figure that probably is a, the important reason right there. Sure. Radiance Middle Tower. Radiance Middle Tower. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. Creating all those delusions constantly. Good luck dealing with all of that. We do hear, uh, looks like they are going for Roshan here's doo -wop. Uh, They get a stun on the Storm Spirit. Boulder Smash, but no follow up really. Dark Series charging in. He does have his combo. The deck are going to be deactivated though. Pretty desperate move by Duo Off, but you know what? When they're down with like they are, you gotta take a chance. There's the wall combo in the, in the background over here. Slaughter the crush to follow. Catches three, but this doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. 747 jumps in. Life Stealer still going for Roshan this whole time. Global Science activated. The Metamorphosis activated once again from Mason in the background. Can they at least kill Roshan? They do. He picks up the Aegis. But at what cost right here? He's going toe to toe with Terra Blade. He's trying to outlast him with the Life Stealer. The Invisible Blade comes out. But again, he still even has a Sunder. So yeah, gets the Aegis killed. And Mason still has a Sunder to use. Darkseer goes down. And this Life Stealer, he is completely surrounded. They jump back in with 747. But no, there's the Sunder. And GG, well played. It's official. Game two and the series. Going in favor of Onyx for 2 0 here. Deer remain alive. Congratulations. Do up. Fortunately, I think that means their chances are going to be coming up short here for these qualifiers. But uh, valiant effort. So, Onyx came back, though, man.